Mario, but we continue talking a little Jays baseball with former Blue Jay Ricky Romero, who joins us now from his California home. What's up, Ricky? How are you, man? Good. How are you guys doing? Uh, Jesse, good. Oh, Myself, yeah. Great. good. Yeah, of course. And uh, the Jays, <laughs> good. They won their third straight ball game today. Listen, I heard people talking about Kevin Gossman not having his good stuff today. I love it when I see a pitcher not have their good stuff and still go six scoreless. Yeah, I mean, that happens from time to time. And obviously, being a starter in the big leagues for for a few years, that that happened to me. And and Pat Henkin used to always say, how many starts do you really feel good for when you go out there during a whole season? When you put 32 starts together, how many do you actually feel good for? And I guarantee you many pitchers will say maybe four, five, six. The rest you have to kind of grind. And sometimes that's just what happens. And when you see what Kevin Gosman did today, where he's like anywhere from 90 to 95 and working on that command and throwing that nasty split uh change up um I mean that's that to me is a recipe for success and when you're able to do that and go out there and not maybe feel your greatest uh, and still get seven sh shutty I mean that that that's great in, in my opinion and again I mean sometimes as a starter you're not always going to feel good it's not always going to be pretty or the way your body feels coming out of the bullpen but um that's where you mentally have to grind it out and when you do that you feel so much better than the outings that you did have your your a plus stuff well let's talk about that feel so much better because listen i've said this a number of times on the show with jesse but we got some different viewers watching the jays game and sticking with us but Connor mcdavid talked to me best player on planet earth in the game of hockey about his confidence even though he led the league in scoring last year and Listen, I know the Royals only scored four runs in their first three games, but the last three Jays starters, 18 innings of one run ball, allowing just eight hits over those 18 innings. Is the confidence gained from pitching like that transferable? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think it can get contagious, especially you, we saw what Kikuchi was able to do. And then you go you know, back up, up to the top of the rotation with Manoa and Gosman. And yeah. we said it last week, right, Timmy? We said, hey, we want to see how Alec Manoa is going to bounce back from that rough outing right. after opening day. And he showed us, I mean, this is this is who he is. And, and that's going to happen from time to time. He's going to get punched in the mouth, and it's how you recover from it. And I think Alec Manoa did such a good job of that last night. Let's face it, the Toronto Blue Jays are a lot better team than Kansas City Royals. But... In saying that, the Kansas City Royals are still a big league team, and they're not going to back down from the Toronto Blue Jays. So, this is where, as a as as there's so much talent on this team, you can't take teams lightly because anything can happen on any given day. And Manoa came in, Gosman came in, and they both gave gave uh, seven good innings of, of of ball. And as a manager, John Schneider has to be sitting really really happy because one, you kind of don't have to dig into the bullpen as much, and you get to come to Anaheim where you're facing two probably of the best hitters on the planet in Otani and Trout, so that should be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun. we got three with the Angels before the Jays return for their home opener against Detroit. On April 11th, we will be live from there with Tim and Friends. Your pitching matchups for the Angels, interesting. But, you know, I almost got sick of the new look Jays that I was being promised in spring training. It was with the WBC a little longer, a little more expanded in the spring. And by the time we're always done in Grapefruit League action, you're like, all right, let's get to the real games here. But I kept <laughs> hearing this promise of, oh, we're going to play a little differently defensively. It's going to be a little bit more heads up. Base running is going to be important. And I know it's a small sample size, Ricky, but like I've seen a lot of real heads up baseball and it makes me feel like some of this tinkering and some of these promises are being fulfilled. Oh, 100%. And I think it all starts with defense. Obviously, when you add Dalton Varsho and then Kevin Kiermaier, I mean, it's no secret. He can go out and get him with the best of them. And I think you saw it today. Kevin Kiermaier, I mean, stretching a single into a double with two outs and then Bichette comes and, and drives him in. Little things like that are so big in a, in, a, in a game, and you put the pressure on the defense at all times. And, and when when a pitcher knows that, that, oh, man, these guys are going to be so pesky with two strikes, we saw a lot of great two-strike hitting today, too, where guys are willing to go the other way. It wasn't just pull, 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 pull. Even Vladdy in the first inning, two two strikes, he takes takes the ball the other way. Bo Bichette, we saw it hit. He, he did it a few times. So And then Kevin Kiermaier, to me, I mean, he plays like, 
it's his last game every day. I mean, to take a single to a double, and then at the end, even on a ground ball, he's running a hard 90 down the line. I mean, it, I, I that, that type of stuff, in my opinion, is contagious too, and it, and it brings a different dynamic into the team. And you can just see it defensively, like I said, and, and then base running. Yeah, and it raises the bar, right? Like, if you don't play to that level, all of a sudden there's guys in that dugout looking over at you, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. And Kevin Kimmeyer comes from an organization where I feel like they do a lot, a lot, a lot of things the right way. Yeah. And and Tampa, there's no reason why Tampa is so good. And, and they continue to be so good as, as the time goes on. All right. You mentioned the opposite field hits. Jays coming into today had 19 hits to the opposite field. That was second in the big leagues, just to back up what you're saying here. Uh, Jesse Rubinoff is always backing up what Hi, we're saying here. Lots of feedback at Tim and Friends. The differentiator on this show is we allow that feedback to make its way onto the show. You got stuff for Ricky? Yeah, so we asked uh, online uh, what's been the biggest surprise of the Blue Jays season so far, Rick. Uh, I'm going to roll through a couple here and then I'll ask you a question. Um, Ali says, not necessarily a huge surprise, but most stoked about watching the kind of ball Varsho and Kevin Kiermeyer are bringing to the up, table. We were just talking about yeah, yeah. They've, been, they've been great. Uh, ben, base running has improved dramatically. Small ball offense now a concern for opponents. And I want to get to this one because I think it's it's an interesting take. Uh, Chris says, the lack of atmosphere in the dugout from last year, tell me I'm wrong, please. Oh, he's so miss, maybe He's missing the home run jacket. He's looking for a bit, yeah, <laughs> maybe looking for a bit of a, a, an issue here. But I want to get your take on that, Rick, because it, it is a bit more understated in the dugout. Not that that's a good thing or, or a bad thing, but what have you seen just sort of how they're communicating with each other, maybe getting used to each other still here early in the season? Yeah, I... I I think it's 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 business like, and not that it has to be business like, because again, we want to see a fun dugout. We mm -hmm. want to see a guys going out there and enjoying the game of baseball, which I think they are. Um, I just, I mean, I just feel like everyone's pretty locked in right now. I mean, when you look at these hitters, and and it's still early in the season. It's still, I think these guys are still getting to know each other, even though they've had a full spring together and stuff like that. It's different when you have 25 guys, and those are the 25 guys you're going to roll out with. But I, I, to me, I, I don't see, I don't see. To me, I'm indifferent to it. I, it's not like I'm seeing like, oh, yeah, there's like some tension or anything like that. I think that everyone's just locked in. I mean, Vladdy has came out and said it, man. Like, hey, like, I'm, I'm, I want to be locked in this year. I want to do this. I want to do stuff differently. I mean, we all heard about the trailer and stuff. And he, he even came out and said, I, I regret I kind of regret saying that. So mm -hmm. I think it's more business like it's, hey, we we got the team. Let's go out there and win and and, and let's take care of business. And and the rest will take care for itself. I think um, eventually as as time goes on, I think this. It, you're, you're going to start seeing probably these guys loosen up a little bit. And obviously it wasn't the hottest of starts to the season. So that probably had something to do with it, but right. I, I think they're going to be just fine. We, we saw the video of Hector LeBron putting on the imaginary yeah. home run jack. And yeah. I thought, I think that's where a lot of this come from, honestly, but Vladdy has been locked in. It's not like it's affecting his play. I mean, he's been as good as anyone in the big leagues. Yeah. I mean, Locked in is an understatement, right? I yeah. mean, the swings he's taking right now and the fact that, what is it, one strikeout as opposed to five walks? I mean, if he continues on this pace, man, watch out. I think he did it after he hit the home run. I think he flashed the little money signs. <laughs> that stocks is going to keep rising on this young, <laughs> young superstar. Uh, you see the numbers here, and there were some kind of looking at what Vladdy did in the first couple of games, but the amount of hard hit balls, like his actual numbers coming into today and his expected numbers, meaning what they normally do when you hit the ball that hard, are, are way higher expected. So he has been absolutely seeing it very well, and we're starting to see the ramifications with now two home runs in as many games. Hey, listen, we always love talking baseball with you. Thanks for dropping by and uh, I guess the Jays are coming to you next yeah they are I'm actually scheduled to possibly go to the game on Saturday my son's all about it all of a sudden so I think the baseball uh, thing has the baseball bug has hit him a little bit so <laughs> nice. I'm excited to take him to the game on Saturday so nice. it should be fun and as always it's always great talking to you guys and thank you for everything uh, appreciate it uh, the Jays headed to Los Angeles uh, Ricky Rowe country is what we call it around here thanks Ricky <laughs> Thank you, guys. There is uh, Ricky Romero joining us here on Tim and Friends from California. All right, mm -hmm. listen, Jay's home opener just five days away.